So then, that seemed to go a little differently than I expected. When I set out to make the video that I uploaded last Friday on Games Workshop is killing my channel, I wanted it to be honest and show my passion. And whilst I knew it would maybe drive a few more views than normal, I assumed it might just get a little further out to my current subscribers rather than kind of having the mini explosion that it did. It was written from a point of view of explaining to my current followers who maybe know me and my channel a little better already and maybe understand a lot of what I said in the context of that. But as happens when something gets shared a little more widely, that context is often lost. And so unsurprisingly, it's driven a lot of comments, questions, critiques, and in some cases, a lot of anger in my direction. I've appeared in Twitter threads about how clickbait is ruining the hobby. I've been the topic of forum posts telling me everything I'm doing wrong. And I've even been the subject of other creators' videos, which have had longer run times than my initial one, telling their audience why they disagree. Now I accept that, and it's par for the course of opening yourself up publicly online. However, I've also had an overwhelming amount of support and an influx of new subscribers, which I really wasn't expecting. With that in mind, I thought I'd respond to some of the main or common questions and critiques aimed at me in the video and to try and give some context to the background of my channel, what I've been trying to do as a creator and answer some of the suggestions of what I should do going forward. I figure this will give me a chance to maybe explain some of the nuances of what I was aiming to get across and then draw a line under it to move on and get back to my main types of content. I've broken down the vast majority of people's comments into four main topics. The first one is concerning all of the comments regarding me doing this as my job full time. Things like your job doesn't need to be fun, just make GW content if you're relying on views to make money, the ideas around make one video for the YouTube algorithm and then maybe make one of your passion ones for yourself. And then of course the comment of get a proper job. Again, some of this is lost in the context of maybe not knowing much about me and my channel. Now, I never started this channel with any aim of doing it full time, and it was never about the number of views. And what may be surprising to some folks is it's still not really about the number of views. People have said things like, I'd never be trying to do it full time with views as low as that. And without any other context and looking at my views in isolation, I'd 100% agree. However, this channel has always been community focused channel and it's been about covering the games, the products and the topics that I enjoy and shining the light on some games and systems that don't always get the chance to be seen. I know these don't drive big numbers, however what they have done over time is build a very loyal and very passionate community of people who support what I've been doing and have backed me in being able to do it. Their Patreon support, the live stream donations, buying merchandise using affiliate links and things like that have given me a relatively stable amount of money each month that was enough for me to take the plunge into stepping away from my old job and giving me enough to be able to do something I'm hugely passionate about. Think about it from the point of view is that if my video only got 200 views, many would consider this to be a huge failure. But what if those 200 views came from 200 people who were super passionate about what I do and supported me? Then my content is hitting its target audience. That's why on the surface, it looks like what I'm doing shouldn't really work, but in reality, it does. I'm not making very much money at all, but I'm making just enough that it allows me to do something that I absolutely love. It won't pay the bills on its own, but combined with my wife's income, it makes it work. It means I can be the parent that picks up my son from school every day while my wife works. I can be at home and look after him while he has school holidays or maybe off sick. And it means as a part-time income, I get to do something that's flexible around our family life, but also gives me a purpose and a passion rather than just working part-time in a supermarket, for example. The video wasn't a cry about how my channel and business is failing and it's all Games Workshop's fault. It was an explanation of the background of why I've been in a creative slump, why that caused me to put more pressure on myself, why there's been less content than I expect to make and my supporters deserve to have lately, and an explanation of how I plan to put things right and get out of it. The next point I've had is around how live streaming is killing my channel. All of my videos are just two hours of me and a camera and people don't watch long form content. On the surface of it, I'd 100% agree. And without the context, I have no issue at all with these comments and critique. However, digging below the surface, there's some bits that aren't obvious. As I mentioned before, my channel has always been community focused and the live streams that I do every Monday are aimed at that particular audience. It's part of the week where the community comes together, they chat to me, they chat to each other and it gives them a chance to get to know the other members. It's a chance I get to talk about lesser known games, give them the opportunity to ask questions about them and then I can answer in real time and it's also a bit of a recruiter for people who get on board with what I'm trying to do and then maybe later join the Patreon. Again, they've never been about driving views or 
or growing the channel. They've been about cementing and growing the community. Now, I agree only doing these live streams will not help me long term, but then that was never the plan. They were always meant to be part of the offering from me and not the only content I upload to YouTube. However, as I explained in my video, I've been in that creative slump where I've struggled to come up with interesting topics that will get views, more on that later, and so I've been second guessing myself and not making enough content. I've continued with the live streams every Monday and so it then looks to a new viewer that that's all I make, when that's not really the plan or the whole story. The third point, and maybe one of the biggest ones, was around the Games Workshop part. Things like don't blame Games Workshop, blame yourself, that I'm very anti-GW, this is all clickbait, and if you make videos about less popular games, you're bound to get less views. Now again, without the context, some of this is valid criticism. On the point of me being anti-GW, I can promise you that I'm very much not. I said that I like some GW stuff and not other stuff, but then I could say that about every company making games and miniatures. I think sometimes criticism about something is taken as a personal attack if it's about the thing that you love, and that wasn't my intention. The clickbait accusation and saying don't blame GW etc, I think that this is a little more nuanced and maybe more down to misinterpretation. Now in the video I wasn't specifically blaming GW the company as the root of all my problems. The point I was trying to make was that GW's IP dominance of the wargaming hobby market casts a big shadow over everything else. It influences how content creators make content, it influences how hobby stores stock their shelves, and it influences how YouTube's algorithm works. In my video and title, I was referring to how GW's size and influence caused me to lose my focus, stray from my original plan, and meant my channel was declining according to my own standards. I didn't mean that GW was sending around the channel police to shut me down. I more recently got distracted for a while about the number of views rather than the main reasons why I started down this path in the first place. And I was frustrated regarding the lure of making GW content just to get those views. And so I started to doubt the ideas I had around other miniatures games. And this sent me into that creative slump. I wanted to get views, but I didn't want to make GW content as I didn't personally enjoy their stuff currently. That's how GW was killing my channel. Now, is there something sensationalistic about titling my video like this? Absolutely, but it's about grabbing attention rather than genuinely trying to mislead people. And I feel that's the definition of clickbait, intentionally misleading people. Now, if you see that video for the first time in your YouTube feed, you know nothing at all about me or my channel. And especially if you're a lover of GW products, you may come into it with a preconceived opinion based upon your positive bias. It doesn't mean I've intentionally misled anyone. It's just that it wasn't what you were maybe expecting. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. I'm frustrated by the way this huge influence causes some disparity in what people see in their stores, what people are willing to give a try to, and what they're recommended to view, even though the content on a different game may be of interest to them. I'd like for people to be able to see the alternative content and then make up their own mind to watch it or not, rather than be hidden away from their view because of the market dominance of something else. I'm not telling people whether they should buy or play GW games or products or not. I just want the folks who are maybe looking at other stuff to be able to see what's on offer without it being hidden away because the size of the dominant player influences what people get to see. The last point and a lot of people's suggestions were around just making content about other games but using GW minis or maybe comparing games to GW to ride the GW in the title algorithm train. On those suggestions, those folks are right to an extent. I can absolutely use that to my advantage, but there's elements of that which make me feel a little bit unethical. Now this is a personal thing to me, but it almost feels more like clickbait than what I've just done. It's a valid approach and it might be something I use selectively where I think there are genuine comparisons, but I don't want to build a future relying upon it to reach a wider audience specifically. So if you got this far, thank you for giving me the time to maybe build on my initial intentionally highly edited commentary on why I felt GW were causing me to have doubts about the future of my channel. To summarize, this channel started as and will always be an extension of my hobby and the things that I love. And for a period of time, I forgot what was important to me. One benefit of making that video is I seem to have found a whole host of interesting creators and designers who saw me because of the way it blew up a little and we're all chatting about making some fun and interesting non-mainstream content together. And that can only help me on my journey of staying true to my vision and doing what I love about what I love.